The Look Alive podcast is sponsored by Sonic. I'm Alex Glaze. This is the Look Alive podcast. We're going to be bringing you exclusive interviews from some of the biggest figures in Atlanta sports right here. And don't worry if you're not a big sports fan. We're not going to be talking X's and O's. We want to help you get to know your favorite players, coaches, general managers, and other sports figures just as people because everyone has a story. So we just want to sit down. We just want to talk. So that's what this podcast is going to be about. This week, we got to catch up with Georgia Tech men's basketball coach Josh Pastner and really cool stuff from from Josh just about how he got his start, how he ended up at Georgia Tech, and how he relates to his players. He's a 42-year-old guy trying to relate to 18, 21-year-old guys. So, spoiler alert, it's not through TikTok or anything like that. So, Josh was a really great interview. So, without further ado, let's head out to Georgia Tech, where earlier in the week, I sat down with Josh Pastner. Joining me now, we got Josh Pastor here, Georgia Tech basketball head coach, getting into your fourth season. How's it going? It's going well. You're right. Fourth season. Uh, this is my 11th year as a head coach. Yeah. Um, it's a long time. It's a long time. Uh, not easy to be a head coach. I love every day of being a head coach. Um, um, I have literally have loved every second of my job. Uh, yeah, there's been highs, there's been lows, uh, but I wouldn't trade her for anything. And um, I've, I've thoroughly have enjoyed my time, not only as a head coach, but at my, I've been a head coach seven years at Memphis. This is my fourth year at Georgia Tech. Been to two great places. Um, I hope to be able to be a head coach all the way until I'm 70 or 75. Um, and then my wife reminds me, how about you just focus on one day at a time? So, that's a good way to look at it. That's, a, that's, that's what I try to do from moving forward. I don't think a lot of people know this. You've been, I mean, maybe that's just your college uh, career, but you've been coaching for forever. I mean, I think I saw somewhere that, you know, you were coaching AAU when you were a teenager, and you're a son of a coach, so you never really had a choice in all this. But, but how, how has that journey kind of been for you? Well, you're right. I mean, I, I, I remember in fifth grade, I remember I was watching the Lakers Celtics on one of the national networks, and I remember turning to my dad and saying, if I want to stay involved in the game of basketball, and if I can't play in the NBA, I said the next best thing to playing is coaching. It keeps you in the game, the adrenaline game, yeah. rush, everything with you know involved. And really, since that time in fifth grade, I put all my energies towards coaching. I still worked my tail off to try to one day play in the NBA. Obviously, I recognized my parents' size was not <laughs> going to, and their DNA was not going to allow me, based on my athleticism, wasn't going to allow me to play in the NBA. But uh, um, uh, so I really put a lot of my energy. And you're right, I was coaching as a 16-year-old, a 17-year-old, people who were older than me. Uh, I coached both boys and girls in grassroots basketball. I started a scouting service when I was 13 years of age called Josh Pastner Scouting Service, watching all kinds of young talent and sending them out to uh, college coaches around the country. So Were coaches it, taking you seriously? They were taking me seriously. In fact, they actually reached out to my dad multiple times and wanted to order the service. My dad had to tell him, hey, he's only 13. <laughs> so um, um, it's been in my blood. I love coaching. And the biggest thing about coaching, look, there's a scoreboard. You want to win. There's a winner and a loser. The, the, the adrenaline rush, the competitive fire in you, in your, in your gut, in your, in your belly to, 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 to want to compete. But the greatest impact that I believe coaching can be is you're, in the end, it's about education, and you're really a teacher. You're an educator. And you can make such an, a positive difference, a positive impact in so many people. As, we, as, you, as you and I talked about, you, you played college football. You played football, high, high school, high school, high school, football, high school, high school football. high school football. You look like you played in the NFL. You I look like you're in great shape. Right. But, but, you know, you're, you're, the coach made an impact on you. You know how it is, the, the camaraderie, the, the, the discipline of what a team's about, and, you, and a coach has an opportunity to make a lot of, um, you know, life lessons that, that, a, that a young person can take, you know, for the rest of their lives. How long did it take you to get there, though? Because I imagine, I mean, you're still a young coach, but yeah. as a younger coach, you know, you are looking at that scoreboard, you are looking at the wins and losses, and you're probably your toughest critic when it comes oh, yeah. in that aspect. So how long did it take you to kind of transition to the mentality you have now? Well, a few things. <clears throat> Look, when I, was, um, when I was at the University of Arizona, because I played there, I was a student athlete there, um, and we actually, my freshman year, we won the national championship. I actually knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to coach, and actually I got my degree uh, in, in my bachelor's degree in two and a half years, and I got my master's degree in one year. Yeah, because it was, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to get through my education to make sure that I, that, that in, people knew that I was serious about my academics because I figured when I get, if I was coaching in college, you're dealing with students, you know, student athlete. 
But but I have recognized as I have gone into my uh, as I'm in my 11th year of being a head coach, you know, I'm a better coach today than I was in year one. And part of that is understanding uh, that the la- it's a long season. Yes, there, like you said, no one's a harder critic on themselves than, my, than me. Nobody wants to win more than I do. Um, but I've tried to be, have better balance. I can remember starting out early in my career where it was just like life or death on every single possession, every single game. I've tried to be better with a better balance and a better outlook. And that just comes with experience on, on, on understanding that it's a long season. It's a lot of possessions. Um, and seeing the big picture along the way as it, as it goes. I want to kind of go to something you said uh, after the Duke game um, real quick, kind of along those yeah. lines. You know, you said, you know, we don't have the five-star guy here, but you want to develop five-star people, right. players, you know, people in general. Just what does that process look like? And, you know, the kind of guys that you're bringing into tech, that aside, what is it going to take to get that five-star guy here? Well, look, our objective is to recruit the best players that we can get. Uh, it's not an X's and O's game. It's a Jimmy's and Joe's game. I mean, it's a player's game. You're going to win with great players. We want to get the five-star recruit, and we're going to work our tail off to get the five-star recruit. Um, I'm also a realist that we haven't signed that five-star recruit, that, that, that program changer based on recruiting rankings. So I have told our staff, in order for us to be successful, if we're not getting that initial five-star recruit, we better have five-star development in everything that we do with our guys on and off the floor. And, and that's what we've done. I, I believe all of our guys that have come through this program have gotten better on both on and off the floor. But obviously for the fans to see, they're, they're watching the product on the floor, and you can see the development of guys getting better. I've hired good coaches as my assistants who are really good floor teachers. They all can really teach and coach on the floor. And, and that's been a big, and that's an important part of us having five-star development. But look, we're going to fight and scrap and kick and claw our way in recruiting because we do want to get those elite guys. Now, they've got to fit the model of what Georgia Tech's, you know, of what, what the mission of Georgia Tech, and, sure. and it's got to be the right fit for us basketball. We've got to be the right fit for them. So it's got to be a, it's got to be a, 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 a good combination from all parties. But um, look, I, it's a personnel game. I mean, you've got to get the right players. You've got to get the best players. And a lot of it in recruiting is not just the recruiting ranking. A lot of it's about evaluation. Sure. Because as you know, sometimes guys can be ranked at certain rankings. Who's doing the ranking? But it, but and or the guy who's maybe lower ranked, he has a chip or an edge on his on his shoulder. Right that he's going to fight and compete and he has no entitlement and he's going to do whatever it takes to find a way to survive and, and have that grit and grind to be successful. And those guys that have that grit and grind and competitive fire, competitive excellence, that internal drive to be so great are the ones that you're going to be very successful with on and off the floor. Sounds, that sounds great. When you see a guy like Anthony Edwards up at, at Georgia, and you know Georgia is another program that doesn't get those five-star guys typically. When you see that, does that light a little extra something under, under you a little bit? Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, we, we recruited Anthony Edwards. We were there very early in his recruiting process. Uh, we were the first one to offer him. Uh, we were there at his, at his initial high school, and we had recruited the heck out of him. And we wanted Anthony Edwards. Um, but I understand, look, I think Coach Crean's a great coach, um, and he's been very successful, you know, at Marquette, at Indiana, and he's, and he's going to do a great job at Georgia. So I understand Anthony Edwards has choices to make, and he, and he chose Georgia. Uh, and, and so for us, you know, it wasn't obviously – he didn't decide to come here, and we didn't get him, so we've got to move to the next guy. And, and uh, we'll continue to recruit those type of guys, um, and eventually we'll get a guy like that. Um, but in the short term, if we don't have a guy, we've got to get guys like the little Josh Okogis, yeah. who turned into – in two years was a, was a top 20 pick in the draft. And we've got to keep getting guys who are really talented and that we can continue to develop them. And along that way, we just need maybe that, that, that five-star recruit, that elite recruit that says, hey, I, I, I want to come to, to Georgia Tech. However, I want the fans to understand this. We, I don't get wrapped up in recruiting rankings – People could say, well, that kid's a five-star, but for my evaluation, I don't think he plays hard enough. Or I don't think he has that competitive fire and burn to get us to the next level. So it's, it's to me, an elite recruit is a guy that is just so driven with the talent 
and he's so hungry with that chip and edge on his shoulder. You're looking for that chip. That he's going to find, that when we line up in that, you know, when we line up in that, in that national anthem, that sweat's coming down and they're ready to go for the juggler vein against their opponent. Jose Alvarado mm -hmm. has that. Now, if you look at Jose's recruiting ranking, he's a three-star guy. But, you know, I would take Jose over anyone any day of the week. Now, a, a five-star would be have that same, that's, we're, we're, we're winning matters more to Jose than actually breathing. I will take a five-star guy if he has that, and a five-star guy that might say, well, what does that look like? Maybe he's six six point guard that has the same attributes mentally as Jose. That's what a five-star guy would be based on recruiting ranking. So we're going to continue to find the right guys, and we're going to recruit the heck out of guys, and that's just kind of what we're going to be. But in the end, we got to go get the job done on the floor Absolutely. and win games. Absolutely. I want to talk a little about your team. What, yep. what is, how would you describe your team if you had to just give me one word? Motor. Okay. Uh, um, uh, I really think our team has a good motor, um, and, I'm, and, and we have gotten better. Um, and so I believe in the word motor, and what's motor? Motor is 100% effort 100% of the time. Now, there's been segments earlier in the year that we didn't meet that standard of motor, but as of late, we have become a motor team. Mm -hmm. The key is going to be, can we continue that game in, game out, possession in, possession out, Understanding that, as I call it, EPIP, EPIP, every possession is precious, and not and it's, it's hard for an 18 to 22 year old. You remember when you were playing high school football that that can I, <laughs> you know, this possession is it that is you know it's first quarter, I can maybe take a playoff because it's maybe I don't think it's going to affect the game. Well, when you get older and you're a coach, you recognize EPIP, every possession is precious. The, the possession at the 1750 mark in the first half is just as important as the possession with one minute to go in the game. How, how, do, you drive that, how do you drive that message home? Because you're, you're 42, right? Yeah. How do you relate to these 18-year-olds and, you know, speak their language almost? Because you have to meet them where they're at. Yeah, I, I, you know, we do a lot of film work. I think being honest and truthful and, and trying to cut out the gray area and being very black and white um, in a sense of you're saying, hey, here's the deal. This is the truth to what I'm telling you, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, and I think they respect that. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, guys at that age, people at that age can sniff through um, sure. things that are, that are fake or trying to be a fraud in a sense. And, and so you've got to be who you are. Guys know me. I'm a passionate guy. I'm high octane with energy. I'm an optimist. I'm positive. And I believe in motor. I believe in self-motivation. I believe in that drive. And, and that's what our guys, the message they hear, I'm a repeater. When I say I'm a repeater, I repeat myself all the time to hopefully they get that message. Never, they will never forget that. When they yeah. go to sleep at night, I just want them <laughs> thinking about that. EPIP, that's all they're thinking yeah. about. Uh, so for, are you like, a, would you say you're a player's coach? Are you, so, like, are you like on their TikToks or anything? Like, are you, are you having fun? With, like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll Do you just, know what TikTok is? I know what TikTok is. Okay. i got three little daughters, so they're, okay. they're on it all the time, or I try to, uh, you know, limit their time on it. My wife does a better job than I do. But, uh, yeah, I, like, I'll, I'll get on, I'll do some things that they're kind of, coach, I didn't know you know about that. Or, you know, so I, 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 I want to make sure they know that I'm the head coach, which they know, but in a sense that, I, you know, you, you, there's, there's got to be a line. However, you've got to be able to have that relationship. And yeah. so um, there's times when you can be, you know, you can joke with them and come and, 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 and be a little more touchy-feely, but there's also times where you've got to, you know, put your foot down and, and, and say, hey, this is not acceptable type thing. So I try to do, early on in my career, I was just, I was like, hey, man, it's this, 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 By this. But, I mean, there, I've now tried to be a little bit more give and take a little bit in a sense when I say give and take. Not so much of a player's coach, more so that un more understanding on off the court. But on the court, this is what it's oh, going to yeah. be. It is motor. It is discipline. It is, it is driven. If, you're not, if you don't have one of those, if you're not playing your tail off, man, I, you, I, I don't care. Sit your butt down. It doesn't matter who and, you are. And the, there's no better motivation than the bench. And, um, I'm all, and, and, and I will replay it over and over and over in the film session when someone does not give an all-effort out play. Okay. So are you, are, you, are you playing video games with your guys? Or? 
I'm not a video game guy with my nice. guys. I mean, look, what, what, probably the, I'll send some. Hold on, you said with, with your guys, so are you a video game no, guy? I'm not, just not, just no, not ready for no, it. No, no, I, I don't, I, I'm not a video game person in, just in general. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll send some, um, some clips of like some movies or GIFs. I'll send, sure, you, know, yeah. you know, to the so guys you, on, GIF, on text. GIF, not GIF. 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 No, right? no. Yeah, GIF. So I, I'm a GIF. GIF. I say GIF. GIF. Okay. Is it GIF or GIF? Which it's up for debate. I personally say GIF. It's a G. But, I say, okay, but it's I supposed say, to be, I think, GIF. If GIF. You okay, I say, yeah, I say GIF because it's a G. It's so a G. It, it's just there's no T with a gift, you know? So I yes, say GIF. That's exactly. the way I look at it. But I'll send them some, or I'll send some emojis. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe send some uh, movie clips, you know, to the guys on, on text messages that they like. And, uh, and they're like, Coach, how do you know about that movie? You know, so little things like that, and, and, and that keeps me connected to them. I kind of want to use the video game thing to kind of transition into the uh, the next thing I want to talk about, the NCAA Board of Governors, you know, uh, voting to allow that name and likeness and, uh, you know, image for players to be able to profit off of that stuff. Uh, just just your thoughts on, on that when you first heard that that was kind of coming a couple yeah. months ago. Yeah, so the, the NCAA or the Board of Governors, the, and, and they call it the NIL, the NIL name image likeness so that's the the name that everybody goes by now um look there's a this is a there's a lot of change in college athletics um you know my viewpoint is we want to do whatever's best for the student athlete um i'm I'm a big believer in that whatever whatever's best for the student athlete now how do you do all that stuff right i don't know and that's where and how do you how is it fair this and and those and those are the questions that need to be asked and answered and, and that's all going to come through like people like the director of athletics, Todd Stansberry, the president, Dr. Uh, president Cabrera, uh, and the rest of you know, the athletic directors and presidents around the country to decide how those questions and answers are to be filled out. Um, but there's no question from my stance and Georgia Tech's stance, we want to do what's best for the student athlete. For you, does that change anything when it comes to you know recruiting and, and I mean, because I just don't know how does that affect you? Well, as a coach? you know what? It's interesting you ask that. Um, you know, in the recruiting process, um, because it has not anything hasn't gone into effect just right. yet. And as you know, as you see around the country, different states are coming up with different laws. And 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 again, the presidents and the athletic directors around the country will have to come uh, uh, together and come up with a you know the final resolution and how it fits in for everybody. But um, um, it's going to be an interesting standpoint when you go into a recruit, and depending on the rules that they change or allow, or you know, with the ni with the name, image, likeness, um, you know, depending on what's allowable, not allowable. Certain, I mean, they could ask, you know, about certain things. Hey, could my son or daughter be able to receive a um, a sponsorship? You know, and could they receive this? Could they receive that? So these are things where prior. It was an automatic no, you're not allowed to, NCAA rules doesn't allow it. Based on what the presidents and the athletic directors come up with, these are questions that we'll have to be armed with, ready to answer that the possibility of yeses uh, along that way. But uh, there's a lot of good right now as in terms of like that maybe doesn't get as much to the public. Like we give them cost of attendance, which is a, which is a you know, step in the right direction, unlimited meals. Um, and there's some other things along the way that they have to call a student athlete um, opportunity fund that in case there is an emergency or in a need, someone needed something uh, in, a, in, a, in a hurry, there's a, able to uh, uh, help the student athlete there. So the NC2A has done a lot of positives in that way as, uh, also. And, and I think this is something you just kind of brought this up. It's really interesting to me. Um, you know, you're talking about making decisions that are best for the student athlete. Absolutely. You know, as a former player, coach, you know, you've come across all kinds of, you know, people from all different walks of life. I mean, what does that look like from a holistic standpoint of what's best for the student athlete? Because for me, it's like it's different for, for everybody. So what does that look like to you? Well, look, I mean, I, I, I'll say this. I, I, you know, I, I, I think um, 99, look, 99.99999% of um, uh, uh, student athletes um, are not going to play professional sp- sports in their respective sport, men and women. Um, I mean, you look at the numbers, it's almost impossible. Like, it's almost impossible to get into the NBA. It's almost impossible playing the NFL or Major League Baseball or um, even the WNBA or, you know, or any, anything like that. I mean, it's just it's hard to make a professional team. So the majority of, of the student athletes across the board, regardless of sport, um, the college education, the degree, the doors that open for them, the opportunities that they're given, 
um, is so much more powerful and will, will make such an impact and, and change their lives beyond the sport that they're playing. The sport just gives it that door open for them. Um, but look, there, there's a balance. And so we've got to do what's best for the student athlete and how to do that. Um, but also, and that's where the presidents and the athletic directors got to come to, together and decide how do you have that balance but also keep the amateur model in a way the best that you can. Um, um, and, and I think they are, they've been told they've got to come up with an idea or a plan by January of 2021. 2021 yeah. So we got about a year, and then by then, and I assume at, once that happens, August 1st of January of 2021 is where everything will go into effect. Cool. All right. So I kind of want to wrap this up yeah. with getting back, back to you for a second because we're talking about, you know, just kind of like the future and stuff. Uh, what is the future for, for Josh Pastner look like? You know, take me back to fifth grade. You're watching that <laughs> Lakers-Celtics game. Maybe you don't make the NBA now. Any NBA coaching aspirations? Is that something that here's what I, here's the reality? I love, like I said at the beginning of our of our, of our podcast here. I, I love being a head coach. I love my job. I don't take it for granted. Like I, I, I there's many people, many coaches I, I'm around where they complain about being a head coach, and I'm just like, man, I you got to be so grateful and so thankful that I mean it's, these jobs are so hard to get, and I I've been very fortunate. Uh, yes, I've worked hard. I got, I got, I was at the right place, right time, here or there. I maybe got a lucky break here or there, but then it's on me to take advantage of that opportunity. And I'm so thankful I've been able to be around great bosses, great people to give me opportunities, like Georgia Tech. I, I would love because I, I, I would love to get Georgia Tech back to where everybody wants it to get it back. And 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 so, um, the drive internally for me. Is to is to move the needle for Georgia Tech basketball to get back to being a regular participant in the NC2A tournament to keep moving up the ladder into the ACC standings, and I would love to be, um, you know, you know, like I said at the beginning, I, I would love to be a head coach till I'm 70 or 75. Um, however, in order for for me to even get to that point, I literally like my like I believe in you got to take it one day at a time. And right now, my, all my energies, every focus that I have is what can I, every waking moment I literally have, and I don't say that lightly, I am being dead serious. Every waking moment I have is thinking about how can I help Georgia Tech move the needle and get us back to where we want to be. It's like to. vacation, man. I'm every- not, and, and I'm not even, and, and, I, and even on vacation, it's hard for me <laughs> not to think how do I, and I, you know what, I told our team this recently. I said, I, I, wanna, I, 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 wanna, I, want, I want us to be at such a championship level of a program. I said, guys, there's many times where, and I said, this is not, I'm not, I don't, this is unhealthy. This isn't good. Many times my daughters are talking to me, and I'm there physically, but mentally I'm not listening then because I'm thinking about, man, I, I got to call this recruit. I got to call that recruit. I got to mm-hmm. make sure that, that. How do you, you check know, that? Because that's. It, 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 takes, it takes discipline, and I got to catch myself at times. I try to do a good job in the mornings to be around my, my kids. I, I, I try in the evenings as well, too. And I also know that you don't get a do over in that. You never get a do over in that. So I've really tried to improve on making sure I'm there presently. Even though my, 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 my fire in my belly is burning, on how do I move that needle for Georgia Tech? And I'm thinking about that. It's, it's just it's the way I'm wired. And I'm just because I'm very upbeat, high energy, you know, an optimist. And, uh, and I love, I love, I love being at Georgia Tech. And I love being a head coach at Georgia Tech. I love my job. I love the people I work for, I work with. I love being around the, the student athletes that I'm around of all sports. I love the other coaches. And I mean that, and that's why it just, I'm, I'm highly motivated to help Georgia Tech, especially the men's basketball program, move the needle. All right, well, best of luck to you. Thank you for taking the time hey, to sit down with me. I, I, I want to see if you got any eligibility left. You know, the way you look, I, I, I'm I didn't play you look in college. great. I didn't play in college at all. So can I mean, you shoot it? Can you shoot it, though, is my I question. I can shoot. I can, okay. I, look, I'm a, I'm a 3 and D guy. Okay, there you I go. I can't dribble. Don't ask me to dribble. Don't ask me to do anything else 3 and if D. We can, if we can, we can always use three-point shooting. All right, cool. there you appreciate go. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Really great stuff from Josh Pastor there. Thanks for checking out our podcast. You can like, subscribe, follow, do all that stuff. And shoot me a tweet at Alex underscore Glaze. Let me know who you want to hear from in the coming weeks. Thanks for checking it out. The Look Alive podcast is sponsored by Sonic.